want to play a clip for the audience here. This is Patricia Neal, the great actress, Academy Award winner, oh. who just passed away uh, last week. Yes. Um, speaking about Mother Dolores and the influence she had on her life. Listen to this. Mother Dolores Hart, she's a fantastic woman. Knowing as how she's had this terrible illness and she's come out of it, you know, she's really, she's a fantastic woman. I would like to send Mother Dolores my great love because I do adore her. Mm. She, you all were very close. Yes. Tell me about that relationship. It, was it Maria Cooper, Gary Cooper's daughter, who brought Patricia Neal to see you the first time? Yes, because Patricia's husband, Roald, had divorced her. Roald Dahl, the, right. the, the great children's writer. And uh, Patricia came to this country to write a steaming book about him. Oh. And Patricia, uh, Maria, sent him, her to us because mm -hmm. she thought it would be better if she came. And our mother, Benedict, mm -hmm. said, Patricia, you may not write that book. It will do you no good. It will do nobody any good. You are to stay here and calm down, which <laughs> she did. And afterward, she said, now, I want you to write a book with Mother Dolores. That will help you. So she did. She wrote the, so the, rook, the book, As I Am, you wrote with her? We spent... Oh, five years doing oh 1,200 pages, Goodness. and then my great friend Dick Denute mm -hmm. came in, and he wrote As I Am with me, and that was the final book. The for autobiography her. of uh, yes. Patricia Neal. Now, the, the, the interesting thing about Patricia Neal, a lot of people don't realize, Maria Cooper brought her to you. Uh, Maria Cooper was the daughter of Gary Cooper, with whom Patricia Neal had had an affair in 1948, mm -hmm. and as a result of that affair, she was pregnant and aborted that child, and it was one of the deep regrets of her life. It is astounding how the daughter of Gary Cooper is the instrument that brings her not only to the Abbey, but is an instrument in her eventual conversion to the faith. Tell us how that happened. Well, I think that it happened because of the grace of God in Maria. Because Maria knew that forgiveness demands an action. And I think that is one of the deepest, the deepest realities of Christian love. You can say, oh, I forgive you. But when you do, you have to do something about it. Mm -hmm. I want to go to the phones. Kathy from Colorado, you're on The World Over Live. Very quickly, what's your question for Mother Dolores? Yes, thank you, Raymond and Mother. Mm -hmm. um, I was recently going through some of my old albums, and I stumbled across an Elvis album. And as I was looking at, at the different songs, I saw Miracle of the Rosary, and I thought, gosh, what is that? Mm -hmm. And I played it, and it's Elvis singing the Hail Mary, and mm -hmm. I was delighted to hear that. And I was just wondering if Mother could tell us if he had any strong connections to Catholicism. Uh, maybe she would know that. Mm -hmm. I doubt that very much. Mm -hmm. I think Elvis was, um, he was a southern boy, mm -hmm. and I think his... His, his devotion was to that, I don't know what the Southern Baptist mm -hmm. faith, yeah. but I don't think that cut him out from whatever um, music of any faith that spoke mm -hmm. of truth. Yeah, beauty, beauty mm -hmm. and truth. There's a great little home video that has surfaced of you and Elvis, you playing the clarinet oh, yeah, and Elvis yeah. at the piano at your yeah. friend Jan's party Jan, or something? Jan gave a birthday party for um, uh, for her friend um, Al Valerie, I think, mm -hmm. and that was on Hazeltine Avenue, yes. Yeah, there it is, if people can see it now. <laughs> <laughs> Playing along there. Oh, I love yeah, that. yeah, that's right. That's fantastic. But uh, now, now tell me, there, there's a connection here because we were just talking about beauty and art. Your abbey has a connection to the arts in the, in the local community. Tell us what happens there. This is very interesting, I, I've, I've discovered. Well, because of Patricia, um, oh. Patricia did some uh, poet, poetry reading after she got out of 
um, uh, her pits mm -hmm. <laughs> and was able to um, begin working. But she lived with you all for a good long oh, time, yeah. for like a year. In her, in, her, in her autobiography, it says, uh, I traded my street clothes for the black dress of the postulant, scrubbed off my makeup, I removed the rings from my fingers, covered my hair with a black scarf, I looked at the bare walls of my cell. I did not live the exact life of a postulant, but I did my best. <laughs> she did, and she, she dusted the grill. Mm. magnificently none of us have been able to <laughs> really to anyway that the point is that she was great mm. and she did stay for uh, in, inside the, the monastery for I would say a few months but and she then, did some readings for you and at, uh, at a, in a theater setting is no, it a theater? No, you see she did the, 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 the reading on the hillside oh. and during the during the reading a terrible thunderstorm came and it just knocked everybody to pieces. It, the tent was ripped, and at the end of it, she said, I'm never going to do this again here, darling. She <laughs> said, I said, well, what are we going to do about this, Patricia? He said, well, I think you should have an outdoor theater here. I said, well, can you help us? And she said, well, I will sign my book, and I will do that every year at your fair, and we'll get some money up. So we built an outdoor theater. And, it, and we'd been having the theater there every year since 1976, mm. but this put the cream on the cake oh, because wow. we now have every summer we do outdoor theater with um, all the different shows from Broadway. We've done mm. West Side Story, and this year we mm. did Guys and Dolls. Wow! <laughs> so it's so it's fun, and oh, it's connected yes. to the Abbey. Is it on the Abbey property? Yes, yes, of course. How mm. beautiful! How beautiful! And you, uh, the other thing we should say is I didn't realize this until working on the research for the for, for our interview. Patricia Neal is buried at the Abbey yes. as well. Yes, she asked to be buried there, and I told her you can't do that, Patricia, <laughs> unless you become a Catholic. And she said, "Oh, <laughs> well, I'll not go. I'll worry. I'll worry about that, and I'll work on that." This was about 20 years ago. Oh. Well, she became a Catholic four months ago. Isn't that something? And died just in time. Let's go to the calls. Time. There's a there's a, a, a caller on the line. You're on the world of alive, Richard. What is your question? Hello, Mother uh, Richard, <clears throat> uh, someone New Jersey. Your inspiration of Claire. Um, had a great deal uh, in inspiring me to profess. I'm a third order, but uh, I took a Franciscan name. I had, he had communicated. Uh, I got a nice letter, two letters from you some years back. But I just I want to say I admire you uh, in your focusing on your calling uh, in a world that has so many distractions. Uh, we love you, and mm. uh, you're uh, a heroine in our part. And thank you so much, Mother. Uh. God bless you. Well, that's, that's very kind of you because I, I, I know that the Holy Spirit does uh, give us strength for anything that we need to do. So mm. I do appreciate that. Now, in recent years, we only have a minute. You've been struggling with this neuropathy, which is a very painful disease. I know you've, you've uh, testified on Capitol Hill about it. Uh, how are you doing now? I am doing very well, and I count on the, the Neuropathy Association. They're having a summit meeting here in Washington um, in December, and they keep moving and keep doing more things to, to help this, this disease that is conquering so many more people than anyone would ever believe, hmm. because it's a, it's a nerve disorder, which is like having, putting your finger into the light socket and mm. taking over your body if you don't Terrible. have the right treatment. Terrible. Well, you seem to be doing wonderfully well. well. Norman Latoff, my doctor, is, for me, um, I, I pray to pray to him. I pray for him. For, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I pray to my doctor. Yes, I, I, I'll take anything. Yes. Mother Dolores, <laughs> rather prophetic performance. What impact did that have on your eventual decision to join the religious life? Well. When I had gone to Rome, I met Pope, Pope John the Twenty-Third, and he asked me my name, and I, and I said Dolores, mm -hmm. and and he said, no, no, tu es Chiara, <laughs> and I said, oh no, 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 no Your Excellency, uh, D D Dolores, and he said, no, Chiara. Oh. Well, I thought I would, I thought I would die in the spot. <laughs> And so when I got this film, 
um, I really rejected any association that this would have for vocation because mm -hmm. I said this is too much. Mm. I thought God cannot really be this obvious. <laughs> He's more subtle than yeah, this, yeah. right? Yes, uh, this, this is too too much. Mm -hmm. And besides, the Mother Abbess told me that, that this wasn't yeah. the case. So it really wasn't until I did a film called Lisa mm -hmm. about a girl, a, a Jewish girl in, uh, who was in a, a concentration camp. And oddly enough, it was that film that really began to turn my heart. Hmm. You say, I've struggled with the call to vocation all my life. You said that in several interviews. Explain that, because it seems such a clear path here when you look at it, when you see the progression here. Well, I think that a vocation is, it is a call from God. Mm -hmm. it, it is for, for every young woman, but God doesn't come down in a pillar of fire. Mm -hmm. He comes through people, and essentially he comes through love. Mm -hmm. And when you are caught by a relationship or an experience in which you know love, something in you asks, what is it that I really want to do with my life? How do I want to see my life really work? And what am I meant to be? And what am I meant, what do I want to do with my life? Mm -hmm. And something inside of you asks yourself, how do I want to make this happen? Mm. And you get caught. Yeah, yeah. well, you, you were certainly caught. Now, you were dating and engaged to Don Robinson. Yes. This had to be difficult, breaking off this engagement, because you really cared for him. Well, Don was magnificent because we were engaged to be married, and at the party in which we were going to be married, mm -hmm. as we were driving home, he stopped the car and he said, Dolores, I, you have to tell me that you really love me. And I said, Don, right here in the middle of the road, you, got, you lost your mind. <laughs> I said, what, what is it that you want? And he said, tell me, because you are not there tonight. Something isn't right with you. Mm. And I said, what are you saying to me? And he said, I think you've got to go back to that monastery and get something straight, because you're not with it. Huh. And I said, Don, what are you saying? He said, go back there and work something out so we can continue, right? Mm. Well, I got on a plane that night. Really? And when I went back to Regina Laudis, and that's when I really had a serious talk with the abbess. Mm. And I knew this is what I had to do. I was always fascinated by that story because the caveat is, and I don't know if many people realize this or not, Don Robinson never married. He comes to visit you every year, Easter and Christmas. And he's even said, uh, when this first happened, he said, we have to do this together. So you have to go to the monastery. Well, he's, when I came back and I told him, I said, Don, I, I think I have, I think I have a vocation. And he said, in many words, mm -hmm. I knew it, I knew it. Mm -hmm. He said, but I want to tell you something right now. We're doing this together. Mm. And I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to help you, even though it hurts. And, and he, <laughs> he was so mad. <laughs> I've never heard anybody is so mad. Yeah. But he stayed with me all through the years. Mm. And as you said, Don never married. Mm. And I wish he would. I wish he would, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. Because as he said to me, all marriages don't have to end at the altar. Mm. And he said, I am committed to you as if I were with you in that very calling. Mm. Beautiful. I, I want to share, there's an email that just came in and uh, from Houston, Texas, and Nicholas asks, why did you not select another name when you entered religious life? Of course you did, didn't you? Well, the abbess did mm -hmm. select another mm -hmm. name because she thought that everybody would be after me and mm -hmm. Dolores, so she named me Sister Judith. Mm. And I was named Judith for seven years. Uh, and, and, and when did, and then it's when you took your final vows? I took my final vows 
she gave me back my own name because she thought that it was about time for me to resume that. Mm. I want to play a clip for the audience here. This is Patricia Neal, the great actress, Academy Award winner, uh -huh. who just passed away uh, last week. Yes. Um,